no matter what you do is going to happen. So you got to like embrace that and, you know, embrace the, the chaos of if you want to make art for a living or put out art into the world, people are going to take it how they're going to take it. And that's the human experience. Welcome back to All Over the Place. I'm your host, Lane Fable. And today we have a guest that I am insanely excited about. Today we have Tyler X. Cordy on the podcast. He is a musician, rapper, singer, producer from Seattle, Washington, who has independently topped 25 million streams and has an album dropping this fall that we go into more detail about and some spoiler alerts later in the episode. I hope you guys enjoy. This is personally one of my favorite episodes, but without further ado, here is Tyler X. Cordy. Did I just say without further ado, Jesus? Or maybe now, is that a little better? Nah, not really. Or maybe I could turn mine down. I don't want to. I don't, I don't want this to be like the Tyler hour where everybody's like, "Why is he so loud?" Yeah, I think that'd be more interesting. Normally, I'm the loud one. See, the thing is, is, I just got a new setup, and I'd be lying to you if I said I knew exactly how to use everything. So, all right. Well, wait. Your waveform is looking spicier now. I know a little bit. All right. All right. Rock and roll. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, anyways, h- how are you? First, just to start off, how's life? How's today? Uh, I'm good. I t- Let's see. Um, life is kind of wild lately. I just relocated to, well, I didn't just relocate, but this past year I relocated to Seattle from New York. And so I've been just like settling. I grew up out here, and but then hadn't been here for like 10 years. And so it was... It's been a wonderful time, but definitely a period of adjustment. Yeah. I mean, I was excited because when I asked you to do the podcast like months ago, I was like, oh, you're in New York, so we could do it in person. Post-COVID, it'd be so nice to actually like have face-to-face interactions, but here we are. So. Yeah. No, I was definitely got out of New York last summer when shit was hectic and it was just like, I don't know, New York was very depressing and yeah but i've heard that it's not so depressing anymore so that's exciting and you know new york's one of my favorite places in the world it's not so depressing but it's a hundred percent not the same which is the weirdest thing but i mean hey it is one of the most energetic places in the world but what what would you say is the number one thing that is like not the same about new york I think it's so many people left and then so many new people came in and it's not the same. It's not the same energy. I don't know how to explain it exactly. It's like a bunch of people that took advantage of the COVID prices and like came in, which is amazing. And it's great. Like it's new energy, but something is still kind of strange about it or like off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the whole world is strange and off. So... Well, that kind of leads me in. I mean, I was going to start off on a different question, but let's just talk about your new single, Nothing to Be Sad About, because I think that kind of speaks to how everyone's kind of off. And I wanted to ask you, is it, I mean, I've had it on repeat all week because I definitely am, uh, I don't know, I'm resonating with it a lot and I can't pinpoint exactly what I'm having this overwhelming like gloom about. Did you write that as like factual or fictional? Um, I mean, it's all kind of factual, even Mm -hmm. if sometimes the names are changed to protect the innocent, but it, it, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've always had, so the song is, is funny in that there's a lot to be sad about, like in the world, like internally, externally, you can always find things, especially over this past, you know, year and a half, two years to be sad about or to get depressed about or feel bad and this is act is you know obviously more of like a small love song in a way um but it's about the type of sadness where you can't figure out what it's coming from that uh you know many of us i'm sure have felt and it's it's like really that's a tough one where it's not just like a, I stub my toe and it hurts. It's like a, it hurts and my toe is fine. And, you know, and so 
in writing the like that little lyric it was i've been coming up with a lot of ideas just like fucking around on uh like tiktok and i'll just write a like a chorus or a little thing and post it on there and kind of like see how it feels see if people respond to it at all um and people didn't really respond to it but i liked it and Mm -hmm. so i was like oh i really want to turn this into a real thing and it was just about feeling like looking for that person who is okay to rock with you even when you're super sad for no reason and i feel like that's like very real to me and hopefully appealing to a lot of people out there who are like we don't want like you're not supposed you shouldn't be in a toxic relationship or you shouldn't be a toxic partner but you should look out for your partner in that like if they're just feeling bad and can't explain why you know you should be there for them that's great i mean it's funny because like when i listen to it obviously like you take you put your song out there and then people that listen to it it can take on a completely different life than what you expected it to. Have you gotten any feedback of how people are reacting to it? Or are you kind of trying to stay away from that and keep it just what you meant it to be? No, I mean, I'm, I'm totally cool with like, and aware that the art is no longer yours once you decide to put it out. Like I kind of rage against the people who get all like, this is not what I meant it to be, or this is not because it's like, well then don't post it or release it. Or, you know, like if you want to have a dialogue with the world around you, then you're going to have a dialogue. It's not going to be just you talking. It's going to be other people talking. And so, um, so I'm cool. And I'm always like excited and inspired by things, giving people feelings I didn't expect or like people getting vibes from, music that I that I didn't get or that I didn't see and usually that is what happens like usually I feel like honestly I'm I I like to think of myself as a good writer but I think that my like shortcomings as a writer are I'm so in my own like world and my way of wording things that many times I feel like I say a bunch of shit and then I'm like play it for my girl or play it for whatever. And they're like, Oh, that was so cool. How you like that part really made me feel this. And I'm like, wait, like that had nothing to do with any of what I was Mm -hmm. trying to write here. And, and it's, and so in a way I'm like, that's frustrating. Um, But I think that's also something that no matter what you do is going to happen. So you got to like embrace that and, you know, embrace the the chaos of if you want to make art for a living or put out art into the world, people are going to take it how they're going to take it. And that's the human experience. Yeah. I think that's also the beauty of it. Cause it's really like everybody's perspective. You're going to, you're seeing it through a different lens. Like everyone's coming to the table with something different and past experiences. So they're going to just see it for what they know. Um, But no, I mean, it's just, I'm always intrigued to hear what an artist thinks of, you know, how open you are to the interpretation a different way, or if you really want it to get like across in a specific way. But I actually, I love that. Um, So I wanted to start off. I don't know if you even remember this. I've been your fan since like back in 2AM club days, like back 2012. I I remember. I think I remember. 2012, 2013. I think it was it was like a small show in a very random place somewhere on the East Coast. Tiny oh, ass town in Connecticut. Tiny okay. ass town in Connecticut. Because I had never what been in Connecticut before. <laughs> do you know what the town was? Uh, I It wasn't. Maybe it was Fairfield. Possibly. But it was the craziest experience because it was like you guys playing and like six people. And it was like a private concert. And it was a great yeah. show. It was just a great time. Dude, I don't know. Like we, I mean, I guess it's also just, it happens to everybody when you're hustling and trying to play music and you play shitty shows and weird shows and shows for six people and whatever. But like we, I think, especially in that time period, I don't know if we had like a weird booking agent or we just, we were playing some of the strangest, like we would show up 
and be like, what are like, of course, there's going to be six people here. Like, this is the strangest situation in the world. Okay, wait, and- I have foot and mouth. I didn't, I, I just realized how it came across. I didn't mean it as like, oh my God, there was no one there. I mean it as from someone who wanted to see you guys. It was the best experience because it was straight up a it was like a hangout and then we all got to talk after and like it was the coolest. But now that I hear it coming out. Well, yeah, no, no, no. And I'm not I'm not at all offended. And I'm, I'm just like, it's more so looking at it from like a logistical standpoint, yeah. like to yeah. like put on a show and to do and like <laughs> there are sound people that need to get paid and like a person to unlock the doors to the venue and like whatever. So it's not. It doesn't make sense like to play or to, you know, put on a show for six people. Like that's where it's kind of like funny to me. And I'm like, who planned this? Because somebody (laughs) is getting screwed, you know, like and which at the end of the day, it was probably us. We probably like made a hundred dollars or whatever. But also it's just like, I don't know. I think having a, a few more years of like running around and being a pseudo adult, like, you you look back on those things and you're like well that was just like silly like it wasn't it wasn't that bad like it was yeah great i hope like for the music and for you and for me it was fine i'd like i wasn't you know like but it's just weird but but to go back to your point which is more positive is that it is really cool when you can have like a unique situation that isn't like bad or isn't like Oh, like we're so angry. There's only six people here. Like, screw you guys or whatever. Because I, because I know people sometimes get like that, and that sucks for everyone. Because you're like, well, I'm just a like, I just like this one song that this band plays, or I just like whatever. Like, I'm not here for any other reason. And then they're all pissed off. Like, it's my fault. Yeah, no, you guys, and it wasn't like that at all. It's so funny because, I mean, it goes back to what we were just talking about. Like, my perspective of it was it was, like, the best concert because it was so, like, intimate and it was so cool to be able to, like, not have to, like, shove people to get to the front. And, like, we just walked in and we're like, no way that we stumbled upon this on, like, a Wednesday night in Connecticut because we, um, like, me and my friends at the time, we went to college in New York. So we took the train there because I was like, we can't miss this, like... (laughs) Did you but, did you ever like had you been to real shows before like of our band or was that it? No, I think that was like the first time I was like in the right city at the right time, like got to see you guys live, which is a bummer. But also it was the best. That's funny. Yeah. I, I mean, wish I was like more into video because I probably would have had videos from then. But I started that long after. Yeah, I especially like coming up and our the old band. Like, uh, we played some really strange shows, but I think the the good side of that is you become and like way earlier than like what you're talking about. Like where where you were talking about was probably where we had fans and we like would play like dope shows, but then certain cities it would just be weird or it'd be like five or ten people showed up. And so, but before that, when we really like maybe didn't even have fans, you just learned to play for anyone, anytime. And like, and that shit is, I think where it's pure, like not to sound like a hippie, but it's like, that's the the music. Like you should sit down with one person and be like, this is this song I wrote. I hope you like it. I hope that it, it makes you feel good or bad or whatever. And, and so like back in the day, we used to just like run around like college campuses and like, like tap people on the shoulder and be like, Hey, can we like sing a song for you on this corner? And, and just like do that because it was like, if we can connect with you and your two friends or whatever, like, that's really cool. Like that's a cool thing in itself. And there's no, you don't have to take it any further than that. Like I'd rather do that than not do that. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to make this like a huge throwback, but I was going through your comments and everything today and like people, I mean, I still listen to my 2AM club songs. Like they're on constant repeat always. So I really want to get back into your new music, but I had to bring that up just because, I mean, that's originally how I found you and your music. So. Yeah. And none of that stuff, it only, honestly, it only offends me a little, I think when my mom does it, because, (laughs) because when, when people do it, like, it's great. Like you like my new stuff, you like 2AM Club, you might know creepy stuff I've done before that. Like, 
And that's great. Like that again, it's back to like it's not people's fault for like liking a song or something. But then when my mom <laughs> does it sometimes, like like I'll come out with a song and she'll be like, Oh, like this wasn't as happy as remember when 2 a.m. Club did that one happy song and she just wants like happy music. And that is kind of offensive because I'm like, Mom, it's like, will you pay attention to what I'm doing now? Like, stop talking about that. I have to say, I think one of the happier songs, American Graffiti is one of my favorite. I consider that happy I, or Mama yeah. Don't Stress. I don't know if that's happy, but to me, those two songs bring back good memories to their happiness of yours. Well, and it's, what's funny is that Mama Don't Stress was like literally <laughs> written to be like, it's like telling my mom, like, don't worry about me. Like, like that's like the, the point of that one. And I don't know if it ever got through, maybe. But yeah, it was kind of supposed to be also happy because she always wants me to make happy music, but also be like, don't worry if I'm making sad music. Like that I'm happier because I'm making sad music. If I wasn't, yeah. I would be sadder and, you know, maybe make happy music. Also bring me to your freestyles. Do you enjoy freestyling more like on your social media accounts or sitting down and working and delving into like one specific project? Hmm. So or a little bit of both. I mean, wh well, I'll, I'll say so first, like freestyle, quote unquote, because like I'll freestyle, like actually freestyle once in a while. But this is freestyle using the term in like the nouveau use where it's like more of just like a thrown together thing. So many times it's written, even when it's sort of called freestyle. I just for like gotcha. the pickers out there or the hip hop kids, I want you to know because I'm like. I'm still a hip hop kid at heart. And like freestyle is like, you're coming up with something on the spot mm -hmm. that has never been, you know, like said before. And then freestyle quote unquote is like, just like, you know, how to, it'll be like lemon pepper freestyle by Drake is like a song yeah. that he didn't freestyle, you know what I mean? But it's like a freestyle. And yeah. so anyway, that that's a <laughs> non sequitur, but the, uh, I find that in today's like world and how quick social media is and how, you know, you can like do something and give it to people in 30 seconds, that is many times more fun and less rewarding than like sitting down and making a song. And, and I think it's probably kind of like the same way, like junk food or fast food, or whatever is more fun than like a nice salad or whatever, but it feels better in the long run to like eat a nice salad. And so, you know, it's like appealing to the lowest common denominator or whatever, because it feels great when you go on and post something and get 10,000 views on it. And you're like, holy shit, I'm so cool. Like whatever, like that just feels good. And everybody knows that that feels good. And, you mm -hmm. know, but then you also know that it's not good for you. And like, you, you know, so, and then honestly, like, it's hard because you can get really wrapped up in like nowadays, you know, I know people who will not even like release a song or finish a song if it's not like kind of popping on TikTok or like, mm -hmm. you know, like you're going to, you're like, I'm going to do this and do this and do this and then try to catch something. And it kind of makes sense. Like it is, that's not a bad sort of like business plan or strategy because you want to have traction. You know, it's the same reason that you don't like put money, you don't put an ad spend into a song that sucks or that nobody cares about. Like you want it to have been tested a little bit and to, you know, show that it's working. Um, but with the like rewarding long-term benefits, that type of art usually is not like the immediate like TikTok explosion art mm -hmm. and and that's tough. And that being said, like a driver's license record or like a songs that come out and like pop on TikTok that are also just really dope or really like well done. Like that happens all the time. And so it doesn't like having one doesn't mean you definitely don't have a nutritious, you know, long term song as well. But it's just many times, you know, it goes to like the junk food category so that's my super long-winded answer for i like them both but like usually if and i'm trying to get much more disciplined with like this past year i think i got a little crazy with like not my game plans weren't like set up where i had like okay these songs or this project or whatever and 
starting like literally last week, I kind of like redid my structure for how I like work day to day and like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And, um, and I hope, you know, we can do this podcast in six months or whatever. And you'll be like, wow, you really followed through on that and like changed up how you were kind of rolling out music and, and all that. Yeah. See, that's something, I mean, this is aptly named all over the place. Like I do that all the time. And then I fall back into my like procrastination, whatever ways, like life's too short type thing. But I really do think we'll, we'll do this again in six months. And I can't wait to compare the two because I just think it's setting those goals and like putting them out there is the first step to actually doing them. And I think it holds you more accountable. I know some people are like, don't say your goals until like you're almost there. Cause then people try to stop them. I don't know. I, I'm a big proponent. I'm putting it out there, but going back to the, the moodier solo path, as your bio said, um, <laughs> after the split from the previous band and many of your songs are definitely like in your feels, in your feels, as your mom would say too. Do you mm-hmm. find a release in making music or does it make you just prolong the feelings since you perform it and having to relive it and re-sing it? Um, you know, I I think that my method of like dealing with dark stuff or putting it into words and it's usually like either things are so dark that I can't look them like straight in the face and I end up writing like a pseudo fictional account of what happened or like back to what I was saying, like changing the names where it's like it's built on fact, but then it's, you can put it in the fiction section of the library or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's just like too like hard to look at. Like if you really, like the really bad breakups or the really, like I remember, like you, I remember I sat down one time many years ago when I was dealing with a bad breakup and I like was like, well, you're like an artist. So you're supposed to like channel this into some good art. And I wrote like the worst possible like song idea and it, cause it was, I was so just like had all my energy and all my juice had been sucked out by feeling like truly terrible. Mm-hmm. And, and so I just the way that I'm built, like if it's really, really bad and it's fresh and whatever, like I usually can't channel that into like some good art. I don't think. Yeah. I feel like sometimes you just have to process it. Um, Speaking of process, do you have a specific process or ritual when you are creating music? I know you're saying you're going to restructure how you go like day to day, but is there something that is, you know, like Tyler does this every single time? Um, well, it used to be like gets sidetracked and does a thousand things instead of just completing the thing that you're supposed to be working on. And that's part of my like <laughs> readjusting my workflow um because what happens is it's like it's the whole thing of like there's a million analogies or whatever but like if you you can work for like eight hours straight of like kind of fucking around and you're like oh man i'm exhausted i worked eight hours but you kind of were fucking around or you kind of were like on Twitter for a little and then you were doing this and then you were taking selfies and then you watched 10 minutes of a TV show or whatever. And like you were kind of working, like you had some little breaks or whatever. But then if you just work for like 40 minutes straight and you're just like, then you will get more done in that time. Mm-hmm. And so it's like the classic like counterintuitive thing where you could be like, I work my ass off. I'm hustling. I don't sleep like hashtag blessed, whatever. But then it's like, you didn't do anything and you Mm -hmm. didn't get anything done versus carving out an hour or whatever. And being like, this is my one goal. Even if it sucks, I'm going to complete it. And that's what having a job is. And so like when you're in creative fields or whatever, and it gets so this like muddy mishmash of stuff, um, it's really easy to not complete shit and to not follow through. And and so I've always like, I've thought of myself as someone who like completes shit and puts out music and like doesn't sit on stuff for six months or whatever. But 
I'm really not. Like I'm really just, I kind of suck at it because I have 30 ideas and they're all half done. And it took me all this time because I like sat around and thought about it. And and then it just sucks your energy. And it's back to like feeling depressed because you're, you're like, oh, I kind of did a bunch, but I actually did nothing. And I don't know if I've ever related to something more. I mean, I don't make music, but with like my videos and vlogs, like I have things from two years ago that I was like, yeah, I'm going to edit that or I'll get that done. And then I start piecing together other things or starting new things. And it is this like muddy, like you get things done, but you're not going anywhere and you're getting sucked in. But sometimes you get a little piece done and you feel really good. And then you're like, wait, I could be so much more efficient. And when you said like spending some time on Twitter, spending some, um, mm, I just like, I really, I know that exact process. And it's, and I think for a lot of, for myself, at least I'll, I'll only speak for myself, but it's like you, we all, you can't cut out the, the junk food or the Twitter or the, like, that's the other problem is that we think, all right, I'm going to delete it from my phone mm-hmm. or I'm going to like, what and then that's not good either because you're just like, you know, that's not real life. Like you're not going to be happy you know like you can we should all have a bag of doritos every now and then Mm -hmm. or whatever and the problem is is when it's like you're in the middle of a salad and you're like oh yeah doritos oh fuck around eat some doritos for a little bit and then you're like your salad is over there like what i thought we were eating me like this is i'm a tomato and the that's i think how it is with social media and with like all these different things and so again i don't want to get ahead of myself because this is a a plan of attack that I have yet to succeed in implementing, but we'll see. Yeah, no, I, um, I think I'm so interested by it because I'm, I'm trying to do the same thing right now. So we'll regroup in six months and see how we're doing. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but is there any like specific kind of like ritual or like, do you like grab a cup of coffee or like an energy drink and like sit down to like, do your like start your music or is it really kind of just whenever it comes to you, you begin? That's good. Those, that was a good like journalistic moment where you were like, okay, ha ha, but answer the fucking question. Oh, no, no. <laughs> See, uh, no, I, wow. Maybe I'm no, getting better I, at this. Normally I suck yeah, yeah. at this. <laughs> no, that was good. It was good to like, you got to follow up when you're not getting what you need. Uh, I don't really have that. Like I don't, it's sometimes it's music first. Sometimes it's lyrics. Sometimes it's like get a cup of coffee and feel awake and get a pen and pad. Sometimes I think most of the time it's like I'm sitting there and some like image or idea or something like silly pops into my head. And so I like open a, a Gmail draft and just like write down a couple sentences and, um, and then And I like to like work quick. And I think being like a, I grew up on a lot of Tupac um, and he always used to talk about like taking the first vocal that you record. Cause it's like, he was just like, I want to get things done. Like Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go through a vocal take a hundred times. Like the first one's the real one. That's where like, even if it had flaws in it, whatever. And so I feel like that with, with a lot of stuff where you're just like, yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but like, I don't want, I'm not, good at like the overthought like every little piece was smoothed and all the edges are gone um which i think is a amazing like that's like the you know max martin Katy perry like pop like going over something a thousand times to get it right um is amazing and i think takes incredible discipline like that's probably back to just like me being kind of all over the place is when you're not super disciplined you like that making music like that is really hard um but it is also like you have to go back and edit and i don't think everything should be like a freestyle or whatever where you're just like oh i just threw a bunch of shit around um but the point i think that i'll I'll try to make you know, every time I do like this type of thing, I'm like, people are just listening and being like, wow, he's really a crazy person. Like, he okay, can't just complete a sentence. No, and- you're on the only podcast where any listener understands exactly what you're saying. Cause this is how I talk. Like I'm in tangents. Like I asked you 
I'm trying to visualize. I asked you two questions and like one had to pertain to the other. Like, you're good. Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> I just, just be aware if you're out there and you're thinking he's crazy. I know. And I hear you and I feel you and we're working on it. I feel like we're very but similar. <laughs> the, um, the, so I, I did have a point that I was trying to make with, I think I lost it though. Keep it going. Eh, I did that to you. I'm, that's also one thing I'm really trying to work on, not um, interjecting at the worst possible times. But we were talking about the process, and I think, I think what you said about like the first take, and you know the well, and Tupac also said, but I think it's also there's that grittiness to it where it's it's what it was in the original like thought and original way you said it. And I even noticed this, I mean, doing it with like voiceovers and things, which is totally mm-hmm. not the same, but it's mm-hmm. somewhat similar because you hear that infliction in a voice and the way someone says, sings, anything it, and you realize like, wow, like maybe I should have just stuck with the original because when you beat it to death, sometimes you truly just do beat something to death and then it ends up yeah. mush. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm very like, when I do a little song idea or a TikTok or whatever, um, if I have to do it more than once, I'm almost like I've lost my mojo. Like, like that's like, ah, oh, fuck. But I, then I want to go do something else. And like, I want to run around the block instead. Cause it's just like, it was the thing. I don't want to like do it multiple times. And, and also like, I'm not a, that's not my thing. Like I'm not a f- actor influencer type person where everything's going to be like i'm going to perfectly deliver this and whatever like i'm going to deliver it how i'm going to deliver it and whatever well that's why i think i love your instagram so much too and tiktok as well i try to stay off tiktok because it really just sucks you in but instagram at least like i I think it's always intriguing because you like you know that when you post like i know when you post a story it's not going to be this like packaged little perfect thing like that you someone in PR like told you to say it it's just kind of like what you're thinking what you're feeling what you're doing at the moment and like I find that really intriguing that's also why my podcast is named all over the place I just whatever maybe I resonate with it but I think it's I think it's more interesting in a world where everything is like kind of you know everyone's like do it this way and it's only gonna work if it's this way so yeah and you should be I think we should all be pushing ourselves to be a little like scared and like keep like yourself and others a little bit like on the edge of their seats of like, what, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? You know, like it, it, we shouldn't be too predictable, you know? And um, yeah. And I think being a little bit like, I don't know this one, this might be terrible. This might like, I'm constantly like, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm so happy to have however many people that really like fuck with my music and listen to it. Um, and so I like, I appreciate and I respect that and I don't want to like screw it up and I don't want to, you know, but I also like a million different types of things and I'm going to come out with one song that's going to sound like super R and B. And then I'm going to come out with one song that's going to be like super emo, sad guitar guy music and, and whatever. And so it's just like, you should push yourself to do new and interesting things. And you might offend the people who love you at times, but like, like any big family, you can also be forgiven and you should be able to like draw outside the lines a little and still be accepted into your family. Yeah. And I think it's also, it's like showing different parts of yourself. Like I do feel like when you go from some of your older songs or to songs now, like the one that you did invisible women with Nova, is it Nova? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. She's amazing Um, by the way. I don't know if you've like dipped into her aesthetic and her catalog and her music. She like, produces everything and has an amazing voice and is just like one of those people that I truly am like a real deal fan of. And Mm -hmm. I'm like so blessed that she's just like a friend as well. And that I can be like, Hey, will you sing this little song idea? And she's like, yeah. So anyway, no, that was incredible. I mean, I love that song so much. I actually found her through you and 
I've been trying to like get into her songs and stuff, but when you guys did that, what is it like collaborating with, you know, a friend, an artist like that? Like, do you do it in person? I know it came out in 2020 and that was a shit show. Was it kind of like, you know, online sending each other audio messages? How did that work? Yeah, totally online. I mean, I've done a few songs with her and she's, um, she's from Germany, but Mm. I've never met her in like person. Um, and so so cool. Yeah. So, but she's just like a really great vibe and a really interesting artist. And, and like, that's, that's it, like period. And so I feel like when you meet those people or like come across them online or whatever, and then you were all doing like a thousand things, but you kind of focus for a second and you are like, Oh shit, this person's really cool. Like I want to, I feel like we're all like, you know, ships in the night or whatever, like passing each other. And then once in a while, the ship like puts on the spotlight and you're able to like see one another and be like, hey, can we do this thing? And so that one, I think I I had recorded just like the little vocal idea, the chorus idea. And I was like, man, I really want to get somebody to sing on this. Like they can really sing because I'm like a singer, quote unquote. And and then I think she sent it back to me in like 24 hours or something. And that's the cool thing where it's like, Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're not ships in the night. Like you actually can connect and, but, but a lot of times it doesn't happen. And like, there's a million, there's things on the hard drive, like half done with, you know, amazing artists or whatever. Cause it just didn't, you know, you missed it or you like got it half done and weren't ever able to get the final vocal. And then, you know, and it sucks because you're like, ah, that'll never come out. Or I had to, take that person off a song or whatever but when you can hit it and you like connect and the lighthouse goes on and you're like let's do this shit um it's special like that makes it even more special because it doesn't always you know come through yeah so when it does it means that much more Mm -hmm. i have a segment on all over the place that's like rapid fire questions do you want to do some of that completely random just answer as fast as you can (laughs) yellow is the answer uh, dalmatian Oh my god! Can I can I do can I do can we do answers before the questions? (laughs) Wait, yeah, we should do that. Just start like making sentences based on whatever word we say. Here, let me do. Let's do the first one. I'm gonna give the first one. I will give the answer before the question. Okay. Okay. So the first answer is. Let me think for a second. Is it like one word responses or like? Yeah, they're pretty quick. Okay. My the first one I will is a starfish. Ooh. Okay, well, uh, these are much more mundane questions, but I like where your head's at. Is just New York or LA? <laughs> Starfish. <laughs> Starfish. <laughs> All right, sweet or salty? Uh, sweet. Winter, summer? Um, I mean, <laughs> all my real fans out there would kill me if I said summer. <laughs> so, you know. Spring or fall? I mean, once again, it's fall is like yeah. I'm fall. I'm a like a leafy guy. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Coffee for sure. I'm like a. I really like. I have bad anxiety and I can't deal with a lot of caffeine and it's you know. But I Same. just I love coffee and like. I also, push, you're in Seattle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just yesterday we were walking around and. Uh, which was the place Victrola, like just classic coffee spot. And it's just, they, I mean, they're just really, it's funny cause it's a stereotype, but it really, you can walk around and just have a amazing coffee shop on every block. Oh yeah. So you're like, I'll take the anxiety. I just want the good coffee. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think some, as, as I try to turn into a real adult, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want the anxiety. So maybe I don't need the, and I've dabbled in like decaf or like half calf. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, normally I would just push through these questions, but you said pseudo adult before and trying to become a normal adult. And I can't, I resonate with that so much. Like I've been joking that I'm just never going to grow up. Like it's not going to happen. Everyone's like, Oh, one day you'll this. And I'm like, no, like I'll get older, but I think my brain is permanently like, 22 forever 21 
maybe 18 forever. I don't know. But but I think but I think that's okay and I think all people are like that and we all have different ages that our brains or hearts or bodies <laughs> or whatever. And I think because literally I was talking to my mom who's an older woman, you know, I will say respectfully. Um and she was saying that she still feels 15. Mm-hmm. You know, like and so it's like whether you're 15 or 18 or 20 or you know like you and you know how there's those people who when they're 13 they're already 35 yeah for sure so that's like i think we're all and maybe it changes a little you know like day to day and and i do feel like we go through like i've been talking about this a lot recently like these rebirths and like multiple lives within Mm -hmm. our life um so there might be a like you're 18 for a while and then you are like 25 and you like can live that life for a while you know and then maybe you need to go back and be 12 for a couple years you know and and that's you know like you're constantly you are able to kind of have a a new and don't they say like your cells and everything like completely regenerate every seven years or something every like six or seven yeah yeah no, I really like that. I mean, we could have a whole other podcast episode just talking about things like that, like the trippy, the not just even trippy. cell regeneration. <laughs> but no, but like the whole like, you know, living multiple lives or like sometimes things just really do like switch and you're like, yeah, I'm going to change everything up. And like not everyone's like that, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Back, back to the rapid fire. Uh, vacation or travel? Oh, that's a confusing one. Yeah. Uh, So the way that I would say is vacations, like you're sitting on a beach with like a drink in your hand, just chilling and travels like you're in a new place, new city for the first time. And you're trying to like learn the culture and take it all in and be a little more like present, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So I, my answer to that is starfish no my answer to that is like you could say both i want i want the vacation with like the culture involved Mm -hmm. so like i don't like it stresses me out when you're like i'm gonna travel and i'm like a real like i got my backpack and who knows where we're going next like that's just stressful for Mm -hmm. me but that being said i it's also it's not very interesting when you like travel somewhere and then you stay at like the Hilton and Mm -hmm. you're like just away from everything. And there's just, they're serving you chicken fingers or whatever. Like Like, you could be in your backyard at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like obviously a bummer and you don't want to do that. Um, But I, but it is, it stresses me when there's like too many things. I think that's the thing is I probably, I want to travel is the answer, but it has to be like in small doses. Valid, very valid. Would you say introvert or extrovert? I mean, f- introvert for sure. I don't know. Like I've, you know, I guess the the class, like the actual definition, is like where you derive your energy from. Yeah. Like, and I do not derive my energy from like going and being at a party. Like, um, oh man, is there like a bug on my wall? I'm in this like <laughs> creepy dungeon studio that I'm like half, it's half converted into a studio and half. It's funny because the back wall looks fully like Dexter, but then mm-hmm. what I'm looking at is like much more like pretty because I, because that's Scenic. where I look. Like yep. I have windows and greenery and whatever, but then behind me, I haven't got around to like dealing with. So it's still a garage back there. Anyway, um, what was it? What was it? What were we talking about? Introvert, extrovert. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, introvert for sure. But, like, I don't not like people and I love, like, performing and I love, like, but, yeah, I mean, introvert. Introverted, extrovert? I don't know. Maybe. One of those. Morning or night? Oh, man. This is, that's a good, like, back to the pseudo adult convo. Mm-hmm. I think that I'm definitely morning now and like i used to be all night and then you just like start not being able to sleep in and i think that's like a thing that i don't know if that just like happens when you get through like your you know mid-20s and you're just like i can't sleep in anymore um and so yeah morning pancakes or waffles (sighs) 
Um, waffles. Chocolate or vanilla? I mean, chocolate. But vanilla is, like, kind of underrated. Like, like real vanilla. Is, I would agree. Is wonderful. But but the problem is, is it's like you get vanilla flavored stuff that's mini, that's kind of just gross. Sometimes. Yeah. Do you hear that? It's like, never mind. I won't talk about that. <laughs> no, it's I supposedly. didn't hear that. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you don't want to hear it. Like the artificial vanilla flavor that they, they derive it from, let's just say it's from a part of a beaver. What? Uh, yeah. I'm shocked you haven't seen that on Twitter I or don't. Instagram. <laughs> I don't want to see that. All right. Book or movie? I mean, I would love to say book, but mm-hmm. much, I'm I'm all fucked up these days. Like, so I, so I guess book actually is the answer. Cause I, cause I do, if I really can like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, <laughs> you, you I, feel like no this, time. I feel like this is an ambush. You have no time for either. <laughs> no, it, it just, it's just like I, my reading, I read the New Yorker like a lot. Like, like mm-hmm. that's like my, and the New Yorker is like a beefy, very heavy text uh, magazine, but it just, it's just like the best writers I think uh, are right for the New Yorker. And so it's just like when you, especially when you read like shitty blogs all day or you're mm-hmm. on the internet and like nothing's edited and nothing's really written well and nothing's researched and whatever. Oh shit. Like, now I feel like this is an ambush. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I'm trying like to say, my, my shitty blog that I yeah. don't edit, because <laughs> no. I don't. <laughs> but but really though, like it's very. I find more than ever anyone out there who's looking for like real good writing and doesn't read the New Yorker, like it's just it's just it will make you smarter by mm-hmm. reading. Yeah, that's one thing. Got to get back to, but uh, comedy or horror? I mean. Comedy for sure. I can't deal with horror at all. Like I'm not a horror guy. I like to like, I do like the Wikipedia of horror movies and like, that's my, like I'll read the Wikipedia page for like a horror How about movie. like true crime podcast? Yeah. I haven't gotten into one in a while. I liked, you know, like I'm, I'll, I'll have like the hipster answer. Like I liked the old ones, like when, when that was like a new concept and there was a couple yep. really good ones and, um, but I'm sure there are still really good ones. It just becomes like, it's harder to find the good ones now. Cause there's so many. I don't know. I, I heard one episode once that was so dark and twisted. It scarred me for life. And I was like, I gotta stop this now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, some people can just like listen to that and it's okay or like listen to that before bed and I'm not one of those people. No, the sun goes down and I'm like, this has to go off and I got to put some of Tyler X. Cordy music on and chill the fuck out because yeah, no. I get terrified. Like I'll get terrified. I want like like hug, huggable, huggy content. Like if the sun when, goes down. Yeah, like once it's nighttime, I like I need hug huggies. <laughs> Apples or oranges? Hmm. Somebody had a funny, I think I was at lunch yesterday and somebody was like, apples are kind of like, we don't fuck with apples anymore. And I thought it was hilarious. Like it was like, just like culturally, <laughs> like we've moved on from apples. <laughs> but I mean, that's uh, true. no, but I mean, I think apples, have you had like the new, like, like the cosmic crisp or the, the honey crisp? Well, the cosmic crisp is the new, like, they took the honey crisp and they mixed it with something else. I've I've never heard of a cosmic crisp, but I'm I need to go find one. Yeah, yeah. No, it's that's the shit. The cosmic crisp and a crisp and I will say the sugar bee uh are both like the varietals that I've been on lately. Sugar bee? Yeah. I've never heard of that. Damn, yeah, see is- you teaching me apples apple yeah i'm actually i'm actually doing apple podcast every thursday (laughs) you gotta start talking about that one of your instagram lives because i would i had no idea you need to let the people know yeah cosmic crisp is i mean it was i feel like anybody who knows is gonna be like yeah of course i know that like if you're into apples at all you're you're gonna be like (laughs) i like i sound like the like the late guy if you're into apples at all yeah you're gonna be like of course i know cosmic crisp so again (laughs) Those of you out there who know what they're talking about, I know that you know, and I fucking. I'm well, I fine guess I don't it. know what I'm talking about because I Honeycrisp. I'm like ride or die. Like I could eat three a day. I've never heard of Cosmic Crisp. 
So I you, guess you know I mean, what I had last night is I had one of these. Have you had a um, just sort of we're doing hashtag fruit talk for a second. <laughs> All I, about it. I, I had one of these like black watermelons. Have you have you heard or had no, this? No, but that's like favorite color, favorite fruit. Never heard of it. Need it. Well, it's not really black. I don't even, I think it's just like, it's dark green and then, and then doesn't really have like the, you know how watermelon has like the light parts like the, yeah. it's like, wait, gr- what green the fuck with- are they doing in Seattle? Is this a thing there? <laughs> well, no, I think that they're actually, I think they're Japanese and I ah. think, and I think what it was, was it was one of these fruits that like was really hard to get or rare or whatever. And so it used to be like a thousand dollars a fruit and then they, I'm sure somebody like was like, we could mass produce this. And so now you can get them. They're still like more expensive than just like a watermelon or whatever, but you can get them for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. And um, the one I had yesterday was okay. That's the, the long story short, it wasn't like, it tasted good. It was, but, but it's tough because maybe I had one that wasn't that great. But then it mm-hmm. made me think like, I wonder if, these are just not as good as they used to be because they're like mass, they're mass producing produced. it. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, pasta or pizza? Oh man, I got to go pasta. And I actually had a wonderful bowl of pasta last night. Oh shit. I would say pizza, but breakfast or dinner? Dinner. Yeah. I mean, I'm like not even like my breakfast. I like my breakfast like area of my day like that part is good coffee and like the morning and everything is new and fresh and possibilities are endless but food wise like I've never been like a big egg guy or like Mm -hmm. like I don't know I don't know like what's and then like pancakes and waffles is like great but you can't eat that all the time yeah yeah Yeah. all right rocket power rugrats Wait, what? Rocket Power? Or Rugrats. I don't even know what Rocket Power is. You don't remember that cartoon? Rocket Power? Yeah, Rocket Power. Is this like Power. a Nickelodeon? It had to be. I think Nickelodeon. I don't know. Cartoon I mean, Network? I mean, I'm for sure Rugrats is the answer, but I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know what Rocket Power is. Okay, then these questions are getting a little bit like, eh. I mean, they're all pretty random as it is, but city or suburb? I mean, city. Sorry. Cake or ice cream cake? Ice cream cake. I'm like a big hashtag ice cream talk guy. We could have a whole podcast on fruit and ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Are you, do you do ice cream? Like, are you an ice creamer? I, I could eat, I eat ice cream for breakfast. Like, I'm not going to lie. Um, do you have salt and straw in Seattle? Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. that was, your accent really just came out on that salt oh, and straw. <laughs> Salt, salt and straw. And straw. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, yeah. We <laughs> we do have we do have Coffee. salt and straw now. Yeah, yeah. That honey lavender. I have bought and ate. I stayed in. I was in San Francisco for a couple of weeks in June, and I kid you not, I ate a pint of that for breakfast because it just felt like the right thing to do because I could get it there. By the way, I have to give a shout out and love to the, I say the accent comment with love. My significant other is from Brooklyn and then Staten Island. So there are many, That's many the heavy accent, many accents flying around my household. And so I like, I respect it and love it. It's just funny because oh. it'll pop out now and then. Yeah. And yeah. It does. No offense taken whatsoever. I mean, I've been told um, that I say certain words just really strangely like mascara Mm -hmm. what is where did you like go to like middle school high school oh god you're really putting me on the spot here i was saying you 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 don't have to (laughs) tell me like the school no no everybody knows i'm just saying i always say that i I was born in manhattan so i'm like oh i'm from new york but i went to school in like i went to middle school in jersey jersey baby well that's kind of i mean that's kind of my girl's situation because she was born in brooklyn which is a lot better than Staten Island, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but but she went like, to high school in Staten Island. So I'm sure she just says Brooklyn. Like you would never admit to Staten Island. Yeah, but I think also like you kind of get to a point where it's like, ah, like what am I gonna like? I can't change the past. So yeah, exactly. I can yeah. only change the future. I will say people just really do rip on Jersey though, and I'm like, I'm on the border of New York and New Jersey. Like I'm right there. Like shit. Yeah, I don't. I think Jersey. 
Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's like the classic thing that just becomes easy to be like a punchline. And yeah, fucking Jersey Shore ruined it, wrecked it. Yeah. And also, right. for the record, the Jersey Shore is like an amazing place that like you can have wonderful, beautiful excursions in it's and around. It's pretty nice. And pretty so it's nice. like that becoming something totally removed from like the actual Jersey Shore is a mm-hmm. bummer. Yeah, for sure. And then one last rapid question, overdressed or underdressed? I mean, I would say like uh, – overdressing my underdressedness like comfy would, overdressing would be yeah it would be like my aesthetic right, like sweet. i need i want i want like an extra sweatshirt draped over a sweatshirt <laughs> like an extra extra large over the the smaller one yeah but not like the creepy like capey thing that was hot in like 2014 or something <laughs> like we're not doing like the long capey <laughs> shirt guy i just want like a couple pairs of sweatpants like that actually was a thing yeah yeah that was i mean i think that's it one last question just out of like curiosity for myself oh wait i actually had questions on my story too so maybe if we have time if you have to go i could talk for forever this is this is the moment where you're like oh wait i forgot to press record <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> could you? Because this is also the first time I'm using Zencaster. So like anything's possible. I could hit end and we could, this could have just been a nice catch up. I don't hey, know. It's all good. <laughs> um, the song Cheap Situation. I, like I know nothing of the backstory of it. Is there a backstory? I'm just curious for myself because I jam out to that. I have like a list of the ones I jam out into my car consistently. Well, first off, thank you. And I appreciate it. You listening, what is what's your backstory for that song? Like what where would you what do you think is going on there? I I don't know. I actually you know, I was watching some interviews because you're the first musician I've interviewed and I was like, I can't sound like a effing idiot. But um they did <laughs> one of the musicians did that to put it back on the person. I was like, I don't know what to do if he does this to me. And here we are. Um that song I don't know. It, it's like one of those sad ones, but it's just such a, it's, it's not that sad or maybe, maybe my constant state is also sad. So it just feels like, right. So I'll tell you what, I'll tell you a little, like, I don't know. I don't know what your listener base is. If this is going to be heard by four or 400,000 people, but that song was conceptually We used to, in my old band, 2AM Club, we used to have business meetings sometimes at the Seventh Vale uh, Gentleman's Club on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. And mm-hmm. um, and I met a person who was working at the establishment and her and I like sort of became friends or whatever, dot, dot, dot. And, uh, and so that was like, whatever, that's like why the song starts with, uh, like met her on the strip stripping for the cash, which is like, oh, like he's, this is like a stripper song, but really it was like looking at love through the lens of it's not what it seems always. Mm -hmm. And, and you can be in a trailer park or a five star suite or whatever and it doesn't matter like w- one person is happy and one person's not and it's not the one you usually expect you know yeah and so um so that's kind of so it's like a that's that song is another it's loose loose fiction loose non-fiction or one or the other love it Love it. See, now I want to just go down your whole discography and like ask you every song, but I won't do that. One question from um, Rishi asked, what inspires you as an artist? Rishi, mostly. That's my, that's what inspires me. Uh, no. Um, man, I read a really beautiful little piece in the fiction issue of The New Yorker um, about Although I guess it wasn't really fiction, but it was in the fiction issue. It was about a kid growing up and like his boombox and he lived in like 
rural Montana or whatever. And he just now and then would get like the local rock station um, and hear like these songs. And then he, in the piece, he was saying that he obviously became a writer and he just wanted one day to be able to connect and make people feel the way that he felt when he heard those songs on the radio in rural Montana. And that's what inspires me. Like I really, those little golden, beautiful starfish moments where like you do something that someone connects with and gives them the feeling that you originally had, you know, when I first heard like Aaliyah one in a million, or when I first, you know, was at a school dance and heard like a genuine song or whatever, like that, um, that's what inspires me is, is hopefully to do that a, a few dozen times if I'm lucky, you know, by the time I'm out of here. No, I love that. That's so great. Love that you threw a starfish in there really full circle, mm -hmm. full circle moment. Um, but yeah, those, that's pretty much all the questions I had and thank you. It's already hit an hour. I mean, thank you for taking the time and coming and hanging out. This better be like just the most listened to podcast of all time. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely my favorite episode, probably because most of the people I have on, like I know in real life and I mean, like, and they yeah. suck. And they well, <laughs> maybe, but I feel like because I like we're social media friends and stuff, it's nice actually just to have a conversation because like, I don't know what's going to be said. So it was definitely one of my favorite. So thank you. It was it was a blast. I'm gl I'm glad that I'm glad it was a blast and that it wasn't like pulling teeth for either one of us. Good, glad to hear. We're, I'm definitely taking you up on that six month mark, and we'll check in to see how the music's going. We'll talk about your album that is dropping in the fall, right? Yeah, but again, that's kind of like a plan ish. Lose, yeah, yeah. But but a lot like. The point is there will be more than an album's worth of music, mm -hmm. but it may not be in an album form. I honestly think it's okay. Well, and this might be controversial for some people, but I think it's almost, or maybe I'm used to it the way that you release music for your songs is they kind of stand alone to me. Mm -hmm. So they each are like a different chapter in like a bigger, you know, like your full music library where, or like each book, I guess, in the music library. Because I think with an album, or like I was just listening to Willow's new album, and it's all, it's so great, but it's almost like overwhelming when you get that much at once, and you're like, wait, I need more yeah. time. I need more time just to... I'm, I'm one of those people who I play a song, and it's on like the double like um, replay. Mm -hmm. Like I literally was listening to your new song just c consistently while trying to write these questions, trying to be more organized for our episode. And... I don't know, like each time you pick up something different or one line gets stuck in your head more than another one. And I, I do like how you release your singles or EPs and they're like bite size. And maybe that's just cause I'm used to digestible content because of the nature of who I am. But yeah, I think, well, and I think that this is a little bit of a minor spoiler alert, but I'm, I'm trying to, what I haven't really done is the, like, just release like two at once so it's still like totally digestible um but it's a little more of like a piece a body mm -hmm. of work um, and like they play off each other yeah and it's like a little package like a little like a side b side type thing mm -hmm. like you know and so that's i, I probably like that. that's probably going to occur sooner than later awesome well thank you once again is there anything else you want to leave the listeners with no I, you know, hit me up. Anybody who's listening and actually is down, they know that I'm, I'm contactable and I'm on DMs and whatever. And I appreciate you guys listening and I appreciate you having me on the pod. Thanks. Yeah. I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. I'll send you all of this when it's done. Cool. Thank you very much. All right, guys. See you in the next episode of all over the place. Peace. Bye.